This is one of Matthew Yurisich's matte paintings that he created for Ghostbusters in 1984. And this is the big finale where the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man comes charging down the street as fast as that big puffy guy can charge. Um, but uh, he's uh, a giant that was actually a man in a suit shot against a miniature street with model cars. And that occupied this portion of frame. And there's actually uh, people and other live action elements that are matted in down below. But there's the road and some of the park to the left here. And the matte painting exists just from this line to the right. And it's actually what we used to call um, a set extension. But they're actually saving themselves a lot of searching around. And Matthew could match the perspective and you can actually see on the painting itself here, the drawn in perspective lines that were done to match the set that they shot. The separate stage set was shot against a blue screen that's got Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis and Ernie Hudson. Um, and um, they're standing in front of a blue screen and so their heads go up into this area here and the rooftop set piece that they're standing on too. So this actually fills in a nice chunk of the scene and in the composite it looks dead real. Uh, I was actually called upon with this painting just before this auction to do a little bit of restoration and retouching on it and I loved getting my hands on one of Matthew's paintings and just trying to match his technique. Uh, the guy was just a wonderful artist and he worked on so many classic films and Ghostbusters is definitely a classic and the sequence is uh, wonderful. You just lose yourself in it, it's so funny. By the time Matthew was working uh, for Boss Film, he was able to paint in much more realistic tones and colors. So this thing isn't as muted or as uh, contrast adjusted. So he was more able to just work in normal color space, but it never does when you're doing paintbrush matte painting work. It never does come out exactly the way that the paintbrush tones and colors do. They're, they're close sometimes, but you've got to look at your film tests. And a lot of times what you'll do in order to make a good blend is you'll actually have little areas where you'll test color swatches when it's still roughed in. And you can say, oh, that blue that I did in the upper left corner actually is a good match for that part down below of the, of the pavement. So you'll actually look at your film test with an eye loop and uh, over the film, the dailies, and just judge by viewing that day's test and then you'll do small improvements to the painting over about a half dozen revisions until the thing blends perfectly with a live action. I can promise you that I'm pretty sure that Matthew might have had some photo reference material to use to guide him in this, but this has to match the perspective of the model and the live action set. So I, this is definitely something that's tailor-made using photo reference as a guide, but no real photos that he could actually just directly steal from. So much of this is done with his drafting skills and his light matching. He had to match the lighting that was on, not just th this and, you know, but if, if you look at the composite, it's really good um, and it's invented. I don't think this was a design that came to him from the production art. It's fun to look at when you get up on these too, and we were just appreciating the earlier Star Trek painting when you get right up on it, but to get in here and see the fake detail of interiors and, and you know, lamps and things that occupy those, but there, there's just the right amount of hint of detail, and it fools the eye. Yeah. 